Hello everyone, this is Inma and on this tutorial I'm going to show you different quick shading styles you can use as well as some pose effects to make your character fit different backgrounds and times of the day. My goal is that after this tutorial you will be able to make your illustrations look cool and professional in the simplest way possible. Let's begin! The first little trick I want to give you is to use the line art to shade some areas where shadow is especially projected, such as under the chin or under some parts of the clothes. By darkening these areas a bit, we create more depth. After I apply these darkened areas, I enable a layer to give my liner some color. I will leave the link to the auto action to do this on the video description. Now, using mapping pen, let's see different ways of shading. When inking clouds, we can decide whether we want to draw all the wrinkles or we'd rather mark them later through the shading. There is no correct answer for this. You can choose whatever works best for your style. Drawing the wrinkles and then shading around those lines is a bit easier, but not drawing the wrinkles and marking them through the shadows instead gives a softer look as you can see. Detailed shading means each element is shaded separately and a lot of shadows are marked to give the illustration a more detailed look. As in previous videos, I have her hair, clothes, skin, etc. on different layers, so it's easier to shade them separately. So all I have to do for each element is to create a layer in multiply blending mode and click on the clip to layer below icon so as not to paint outside that area. When the clip to layer below function is on, you will see a red line next to the layer. I'm painting using only mapping pen, so colors are very solid. If you want to add more effects, check out how to on the previous videos from this series. Now, is it necessary to detail an illustration a lot for it to be good? The answer is no. It depends on your style and your taste. In anime, you will see very simple shading sometimes and that's not a bad thing. How do we do that? First, I put all the elements except the line art into a new folder, which I will call Base Colors. I set the folder's blending mode to normal. Now I create a new layer right on top of that folder. I clip it to the layer below and set the blending mode to multiply. On this layer, I will be able to shade over all the elements at once. My goal is to have as few shadows as possible to create the clean anime effect, so I choose only certain areas like the back of her hair, her neck, etc. After applying these few shadows, I add some light to the hair on a new layer on screen blending mode. This looks very much like some TV anime, doesn't it? However, when you apply such few shadows, it's best to have an overall darker look. To do this, I go to the layer menu and apply a tone curve correction layer. You can play with the parameters until it fits your illustration, but I recommend lowering the upper side and rising the lower one a bit. Because this is a correction layer, you will be able to edit it anytime just by double-clicking on the layer. Can you see the difference before and after applying the tone curve? 
It is subtle as most effects are, but it helps us make it look more like a TV anime. There are some cool backgrounds that come with Clip Studio Paint and many more you can download from Assets. For this tutorial I chose three to show you how to make our character fit in a daylight, night and sunset environment. I applied the background behind the character and while it doesn't look terrible, it doesn't fit completely. Let's see how to fix that without having to recolor the whole thing. I put all the character layers into one folder, including the line art. As you can see, if I hide the folder, the whole character disappears. I start by creating a new layer on top of this folder. Click on the Clip to Layer Below icon and set its blending mode to screen. I will use the soft airbrush and I will pick colors from the background to soften the edges of the character a bit. Remember, we want to make this effect subtle, so try not to press too hard. When you drop more color than you like, remove it using the transparent color. Now I'm going to show you two different effects you can choose from. For the first effect, we right-click on the top visible layer and we select the Merge Visible to New Layer function. Then we go to Level Correction under Tonal Correction in the Edit menu. We move the bar almost all the way to the right until the image looks very dark with just some brighter parts. And we click OK. Now we apply Gaussian Blur under Blur in the Filter menu. We input 10. Last step. We change the layer's blending mode to screen. The result is that the illustration now glows a lot. You can leave it like that if you like it, or you can make the effect more subtle by lowering the opacity of the layer. The second effect I will show you is just as easy. Again, we right-click on the top visible layer and select the Merge Visible to New Layer function. Now we use the Scale Rotate function under Transform on the Edit menu. Making sure that the Keep Aspect Ratio option is on, I scale the layer to 97 and click OK. Now I'm going to apply Gaussian Blur again, but this time I will input 70. Last, I change the layer's blending mode to Overlay. This helps color blends a lot, but the effect stands out too much, so it's best to lower the opacity of the layer a bit. I lower it to 35. When I put my character in front of the night background, it looks terrible, because she has mainly warm colors, but a night background is usually cold and bluish. I create a new color balance correction layer through the layer menu, and I click OK without doing anything. This is because I need to click on the Clip to Layer Below icon first, so that the effect applies only to the character folder. Now I double click on the correction layer, and the color balance window will pop up again. I want to make colors colder, so I play with the cyan and blue bars until I like the result. Now my character doesn't look so out of place. What I do next is to create a new layer in multiply blending mode to darken some parts a bit using the soft airbrush. I especially darken the lower side so as to keep the focus of the illustration around her face and torso. Now I can apply either of the effects I showed you before. For the first one, aside from the steps I gave you before, I will also change the color balance so it's more bluish. The rest of the steps remain the same.
With the second effect, the illustration will look darker, but also more fitting for a night atmosphere. I left the sunset version for the end because I want to do something different with this one. Colors fit by default, so I could easily apply the second effect and have colors blend perfectly, but I'm going to remove all shading from the character and show you a shading technique that looks very good for sunset illustrations. Once I've removed all the previous shading, I'm going to create a new layer in Multiply Blending mode right on top of the Base Colors folder. Make sure the Clip to Layer Below function is on. Then I right-click on the Base Colors folder and I'm going to create a selection from that layer. On the Select menu, I will expand that selection by 10. Now I choose a reddish-brown color and I use the Fill function on the Edit menu. I remove the current selection and then I create a layer mask on the current layer. Now, using Mapping Pen, I will erase parts around the edges to give the illustration the impression that light is coming from behind. This is a reverse style of shading. Instead of starting with a base color and applying shadows, you start with the whole area covered in shadows and you create lights by removing parts of it. I love the transparent pixels of the shadow layer so I can edit it further. I create a selection from the hair layer, choose a darker brown, go back to the shadow layer and use the convert to drawing color function on the edit menu, so as to make her hair darker. I deselect and using the airbrush, I darken parts of the shadow layer using the same color I used for the hair. Once I'm done, I apply the same effect as before. And that's all for today! I hope you found these little tricks useful and that you'll be able to use them on your own illustrations. Remember to practice a lot and see you next time! Bye bye!